Well, good morning, Spirit of Life. Good morning. Wow. Everybody was so good this morning. <laughs> you can have a seat a few minutes. So this morning, I'm in the house, and I'm doing my morning Sunday. And I kept saying, okay, God, what do you want me to talk about today? And it just seemed like the morning wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. And then I go to leave, and the car don't start. And I'm saying, God. <laughs> so I call my husband, and he comes and gets me graciously. It's probably the battery, but it's Sunday. <laughs> and while I'm waiting for him to show up, I said, God, please, <laughs> tell me what you have today. And I'm going to tell you what he told me. He said that. The word of God says, this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you rejoicing in the midst of the adversity? Are you rejoicing in the midst of the bad day? Because my day is going to get better because I refuse to let it define me today. God is good and the enemy is already lost. So I'm going to rejoice in this day that he has given me because this is the day he has made. And I will rejoice. Lay aside everything that is just gnawing me. Like, oh my goodness, we drive that car all the time. God is good. And the enemy is trying to creep in and change your perspective. But I want to bring you back to focus like God did me this morning. I want to tell you, this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is good and he still sits on the throne. And whether we want to believe it or not, he's in control. He's in control. Not you. Stop trying to control it. He's in control. And I choose today to rejoice in my Lord and Savior. My God, my Savior, my King, my Redeemer. I choose to rejoice today because he has given me a breath to breathe and a life to live. And I am blessed beyond measure. Will you stand, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you, Father God, for this day that you have given us, Lord, for bringing me back to focus. Lord, this is the day you have made, and I want to rejoice in you today. I want to give you the glory and honor that is due. Lord, I pray that you would remove every obstacle that keeps us from focusing on you today. I pray, Father God, that you would take away the things that are trying to block us from worshiping you today. I pray, Lord God, that you would bring us back to coming into the house of the Lord and rejoicing in you today. For, Lord God, those things that try to just overwhelm us, Lord, fall at the wayside. When we rejoice in you, for you are our King and our Savior. I give you praise and glory and honor today. Receive our worship today, Lord, for it's all for you. And we'll be thankful and grateful and blessed. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's all worship together today.
just lift your hands this morning across this house. If you're watching online this morning, uh, wherever you may be, God, just lift. God, continue to lift our hearts and our spirits. God, as we lift unto you this morning our hands of submission, God, our prayer is that you find us faithful seeking after you. And Lord, as we've walked into this building, as we are sitting in our homes, if we are watching from a campground or from the interior of a semi-truck, God, let us look upon you this day with a heart of anticipation of all that you do and all that you continue to do. And, and Lord, we submit to you all of our needs. We, we know that there is healings by your holy hand that we are able and for purpose to receive. God, we lift up your name above all other names this morning in this house. In our hearts we say unto you, you are our God. You are my God. You are the one that I serve. God, let us step out in faith for all that you have for us. And we claim victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, worship team. Amen, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. It's an honor to have our kids up here from downstairs. In just a moment, I'm going to ask all of them to come up. But today we promote out of the children's department into the youth department three individuals two of them are here today the third one is is uh, involved in a sporting event but if Ava how did my voice just crack like that <laughs> if Ava how's that and Austin would come up here I'm going to ask that the youth department would come up here. You guys come over here. You look cuter on this side. There you go. go on over there. And the third would be Remington. And uh, as I said, Remy is out doing some other things. Now you're going to serve dual roles because she's in charge. Sammy Joe's in charge of our kids department downstairs, but she also is very active in our youth department. So, uh, if you are a teacher at all from downstairs, I'm looking around to seeing who and all it could be here. I'll just take care of it because you're leaving my class too. I teach on Wednesday nights to the kids. So, point your hands this way, if you will, and help me pray. Heavenly Father, as we pass the torch for the training and the discipleship and the mentoring and, and all the enrichment that these youth leaders can provide. God, we release them into their care, Lord, from the teachings, the training that we have been able to provide. So, Heavenly Father, I ask a special blessing upon Austin upon Ava this morning, that you will just minister to them as they grow. And Lord, in this world that we are growing up in, how desperately they need guidance by godly honor in God in all ways, the leaders that they will step into, in Jesus' name, amen. Before you all dismiss, if the kids will come up here, and you can come here in the front. Come in here. We'll start over here. Some of you don't look like you're enthused to be up here. <laughs> you don't have to stay up here. 
Hey. Point your hands this way, because all of these have, if they haven't started school, they're about to start school. And for all the teachers, anybody that works within the school system, if you'll stand, we'll ask a blessing over you, because uh, we're just seeing a lot of, a lot of things unfold, and it's, it's kind of scary for us older folks. I think our only thing I had to remember, Jimmy, was the fact that don't eat the crayons. Um, uh, yeah, I'm as old as dirt. So, Heavenly Father, right now we just ask that you reach down and you touch these kids and all the teachers, all the school workers that are here present. There's some of these children that are being taught from home, some that are being taught from Christian school, and the majority of those in public school. So I pray for a hedge of spiritual protection to be around them. God, uh, put uh, that hand of, of, of who you are upon them, upon their heart. God, shield their ears from hearing the nonsense that is just so forcibly fed to them. God, protect their hearts, protect their minds, Lord. Let them realize from what they hear from their own parents and what they hear from the teachers and even me as a pastor, God, as they hear the word of God, let them know the truth and let them hold to the truth because, Lord, they are being affected. God, they're being infected with the world. And, Lord, you are the only cure that we have. And we ask that you just touch and minister to all those this year. God, just touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Give these guys a hand clap this morning. And there you go. All right. All right. No, you can walk that way because you're special down there. Yes, you are. Okay, love you guys. But it wasn't that special to me. Huh? Austin, but it wasn't that special. Well, okay. Everybody smile. Welcome to our guest this morning. And um, I'm proud of our, of our children. Amen. I get to... I get to teach them, and I get to train them on a Wednesday night, and uh, I love the growth that they are showing. So this morning, as the ushers will come, we're going to receive God's tithe and your offerings, and, and it's a pleasure to give unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Some people just think, oh, i got to give again. No, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege to give unto the Lord. So as they are coming uh, this morning, um, I just want to remind you that that it's important for you to be in the house of God. It's important for you to be here to where you can hear the word. Last week, I, I was traveling back and I was watching Brother John. It, how many were here last week? Do you remember the pounding on the anvil? Do you remember the enthusiastic voice that he had trying to speak to you. Come on, guys. Speak to you. When he lost his microphone. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Heavenly Father, right now we ask that you receive our giving unto you, Lord. It's for the glory of the kingdom. God, it's from our heart. To your heart and the heart of ministry. So Lord, we ask that you bless it and multiply it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. As they're passing back, I want to remind you that today after the service, there's going to be a brief meeting for all the ladies that are planning on attending the annual ladies retreat <laughs> later this month. Uh, it is uh, filled to capacity. There's 60 women that will be in attendance there, and it's just going to be a wonderful time. And if you 
are not able to make it this year, start planning on being a part of it for next year. And it's back to school time, and we found that there's a deficit in a few things that, that the schools are missing the teachers. How, how many of you realize that most of the teachers buy their own stuff? It's just not always provided for them. It, it's coming out of their own pocket. So there's a struggle some days to get it all. But we're collecting school supplies for our kids as well as the teachers, not just here at the church, but in our community. So if you're able, uh, stop by the information desk on your way out, pick up a list, uh, bring some things in, and just let all of us be a part of a blessing into our community. Amen? And if you're a guest here this morning, there's a welcome card somewhere in front of you. It's green. It'll come on the screen, and uh, that's what it'll look like. One second, he says. There it is. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap for Caleb upstairs. Amen. But that's what it looks like. Fill it out. We're not going to bug you. We just want to keep you informed. Uh, sign up for our, our weekly email and just be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Caleb. This morning I want to share with you a third sermon in a series, If Then. It's just a simple statement, if. We know the first series was if, if you know Jesus, then you know life. If you know Jesus, then you know life. And, and the second in this series was, if you love Jesus, then obey and keep his commandments. This morning, I want to speak to you. If you have Jesus, then you have enough. Amen. Then you have enough. We go through our lives and we're living in desperate times, are we not? We don't know what uh, election will bring, but one of the things my wife said, we still know God's in control. Amen. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. We can give ourselves wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, to God, that we may live a holy, H-O-L-Y, life before him. But it's real hard to figure out how we're going to go through life having one foot in the world and one foot on God. It's tricky. It's trippy. It's uneven. You don't have any balance. Come on, we might as well preach together this morning. What else does it mean if you're trying to be a part of the world and a part of God at the same time? Say it louder. You're divided. Who over there said something? Unstable. Unstable. Oh, I'm going to have to explain that now. <laughs> A hypocrite, pretending to be one thing while you're actually something else. That's what it means. We're so involved in trying to please people around us. We're trying to please what the world says is acceptable in our life. We're going through the processes in our lives that, that if they don't accept me, poor Poor, pitiful me. But we're supposed to come out of the world. So we go through our lives trying to anticipate what the next move is that we can find ourselves growing in a greater social standard or, or we're accepted by a certain cultural, cultural aspect. But we have to step out on faith and maintain ourselves. See, this morning, this is not beat you over the head. I pray this is a wake-up call. Because you can't keep sleeping with the devil 
and crying out to God to pay your rent. You can't be living like the world with no change of who you are. No difference in your attitude or your mindset. And a hush comes over the crowd. And be faithful in saying, I am a follower of Christ. As the man in the back said, that's hypocritical. You're a hypocrite. It's unstable. You can't walk right if you're trying to be in one place and be in another place. It won't happen. What takes place is that you're either going to feed the good dog or you're going to feed the bad dog. And a wise man said, whichever dog you feed is going to be the biggest and the healthiest. So as we go through life and we're living in the world and we're participating in the world and we're enjoying the world, doing all the things that bring us earthly pleasures, and then we come before God and say, God, I need this. God, I want this. God, I really messed myself up again. See, God's faithful to forgive. And He's faithful to forget. But there's times in our life that when we approach God, it doesn't say it in the Word. Can, can I have a little liberty right now? I can just imagine the individual that I was I was. Everybody hear what I just said? How many times I walked before God and asked God to forgive me because I messed up again and again. And I've often wondered if God just looks down and starts shaking his head. See, God is gracious and he's filled with mercy and he allows us to mess up. And still come back to him because he has a hope that he instills with each and every one of us that we, that we would catch it one day. That we would receive it and take a heart with it. Or we just go through, go through some of the process over and over and over again, not realizing the hurt that we place upon who God is and how big of a mockery it is that Jesus died for our sins. There was no value that we place in it. But this morning, if you're going to stand for God, if you're going to say to Jesus Christ, I need you as my Lord and Savior, I'm talking about a rededication of who you are to Him. Get past all this willy-nilly nonsense in life and get to the facts. Today, I'm going to serve you. Today, I'm going to serve you. Tomorrow, my intention is to wake up. I'm going to bow before you if it's up on my knees or if it's in my heart. I'm going to bow before you. Today, God, I will serve you. I won't. You ready for this one? I won't embarrass you anymore by calling myself a Christian and live like the world. Amen? Amen. Now, I could stop right there, but I have 14 pages of notes we're going to get to. Now, for some of you, don't think that, oh, my, 14. No, I've had to increase the font to 20 <laughs> to where I can step back and read the Word of God without you knowing that I'm reading the Word of God, okay? The first series, if you know Jesus, then you know life. The second was, if you ha love Jesus, then you will obey and listen to His commands. And today... If you have Jesus, if you have Jesus, then you have enough. When I think of all that I have seen through my life, and, and there was a time that 
Annette and I, we went to China. We went to do missionary work, and it was back in 2000. Some of you wasn't even in existence at that time. 24 years ago, we stepped into an airport, and in our suitcases alone, we had 96 holy Bibles in Chinese. And we were concerned. We got off the plane over in China and we heard the first announcement. There will be a delay in the unloading. We cannot get the door open under the plane. Now, as we watched, we started recognizing other Americans there. There was about 40 of us total. Nobody knew who they were. And we were instructed, if you get caught with anything, you don't say nothing. You just go to jail for a while. We heard another few minutes later, another statement. It'll be delayed, the door. And each time that came through, a few more guards left their posts. And do you know when the door opened on that plane... There wasn't a guard to stop anybody. Nobody to inspect anything. Those suitcases came off. We walked right through the turnstiles, right to meet Dr. Hong Yang. And there he was with a bus. And we threw all that away, not away, in to the bus. And we left without any problems. We saw on Tiananmen Square where people would hold up a sign that said Jesus Christ in Chinese and they just wasn't arrested. They were knocked to the ground and beat and thrown in. We saw the persecution that they had. We felt the persecution that took place while we were there in China. You and I, we don't face persecution here in the Western world like they do, but how many realize it's getting a little more tense around here? To get a little more tighter in the fact that, that people speak over us and speak at us and, and we hear all the, all the things that the world wants to say, but we have no right to be rebutting what they are saying with the Word of God. Hardships, we face them. Some of you, you may have or use the excuse that you don't serve God because of the punishment that you receive, the ostracizing of it, separating, that people don't want you around. Well, church, this morning I'm praying that you'll take a stand for what Christ is. And with that said, I ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word. In John chapter 15, forgive me, Caleb, starting with verse 18. I want you not to be out loud, but read along with me. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they, do, they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Verse 22, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuses for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among the works, them works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened 
that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Heavenly Father, open up our hearts, open up ears. Lord, let our thinking be about your word. Let us receive your words, Lord. Let me be removed and you be exalted. God, find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. In speaking with individuals over the last several years, I find that some people just don't want to be rejected. They want to be accepted. Some people want to be a part of the in crowd. They don't want to be standing out by themselves. But the greatest men that I've ever known has always stood firm upon the promises of God, and many have stood alone. Their yes was yes, and their no was no. They had the ability to speak in, in love, but with true direction of what the word says. The rejection of Jesus was a major part of his life. Even in his own hometown, he could not do the great works that he wanted and desired to do. Why? Because they rejected him. He couldn't accomplish anything because he was rejected. Many of you have told me, Pastor, I've talked with my family. I've asked them to come. I've spoke of Jesus. And you start to stop and you start to back up because you don't want to be rejected by your family. At church this morning, we need to understand that if you're serving God, you might as well grab on to the fact you're going to get hammered. It's going to come your way. People are going to look at you and you'll be named as the crazy one. Oh, everybody empties out the lunchroom because you showed up. And because you have a pep in your step and a word upon your heart and you're living for the Lord and all of a sudden you walk in and it just, the atmosphere within their hearts just drop. I'm going to give you an understanding. If you're truly serving God, the spirit within you, when you walk into the spirit of the world, the demonic spirits, they actually yield to you. You have to find yourself with a desire deep within your heart that it doesn't matter what people may think. It's what God thinks and how God refers to you. In verse 18 says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it ever hated you. The world's hatred is, is rooted in the opposition of who God is, the spiritual realm of who God is. The world don't want no part. And Jesus showed up and he truly was the embodiment of of God's love, His truth, His righteousness. The Son of Man, the Son of God, the Word of life came forth into our lives that when we would accept them, we would have a life of abundancy. But the world starts saying, you're losing out. You're giving up. trying to read your faces this morning, but it ain't my job, so I'm going to quit looking at you. It's what God's word is. Amen? Amen? So you can't be accepted in one and accepted in the other at the same time. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve man. And in that place of, of attitude and that a point of living your life, that's where the word of God says either be hot or be cold because if you ain't either one that's not proper English but that's who I am if you ain't either one he's going to spew you out one translation says he will puke you out that's a pretty violent thought 
So as we move through our lives and here Christ is speaking to his disciples and speaking to those around you and he's talking about those individuals that serve God but yet they serve God in a religious form instead of a relational form. They know when to stand. They know when to kneel. They know which direction to pray. They go through the process. It's not about the religion. It was about the relationship. And what Christ did when he came, he knew he would be rejected because truth walks in. See, a lie always hates the truth. A lie that is given hates truth. And I share it with one individual. If you always speak truth, it'll die right there. You don't have to try to remember it. It's the truth. But if you lie, it's a part of your future forever. When you speak untruth, it becomes a part of your mindset forever. If not, what takes place? Everybody knows that you become a liar. In verse 23, it says, He who hates me hates my father. If the world around you is hating you, you're in good company. If those individuals around you are moving away from you, they're not moving away from you on a personal basis. They're moving away from you on the basis of to whom you belong. Through many years of being a pastor, in the same after service time, I've had people walk by, Pastor, that was the greatest message I ever heard. And two people later, and you need to try harder. You ever felt that rejection? You know, it's kind of like the guy that's standing up there and he's questioning. One guy is extremely overweight as I am and the other guy is, is not very pretty. He, he's very homely and, and they're going through this and the overweight guy says, well, <laughs> at least I can lose weight. <laughs> Let that just, never mind. Back it up and walk it through one more time. You'll catch it. There's some things in our lives that we're trying to change that we can't change until it happens within our heart. That's where the change takes place. We can sit in the midst of a, of a powerful message or you're watching a powerful sermon on TV or online and it's speaking to your heart. But if you don't do anything with it, you have rejected the power and the anointing of the Word of God. And unless you receive it, you will never change and you need to understand that even though the world may hate us, we think that we're a failure in, in a place that we're not doing any good or being any good to anyone or anything. We have to understand that when we come before God in a humble way and become a humble servant, listen to His words, listen to His directions, listen to the instructions on how we should live it doesn't matter if we're the minority in our thinking because we step over and become the majority in who God is. The humbleness of who God is. There's things happening in your lives that you're fulfilling the call of God on your life. I want to remind you this morning, there is a plan that God has for you. And there's a purpose. But if we don't align ourselves up with God, we destroy. We destroy the purpose. We destroy the plan. Now, I'm not using this term to upset anybody. Please forgive me. But it's as if a child has been conceived and a man or a woman has chosen to abort the child. That's what happens in some of the promises that God gives us. 
at some of the plans that God wants to fulfill, and we say, nope, we're going to end it all by our choices today. And I've sat and I've counseled women of all ages, all color. When I was in Wichita pastoring, I was sitting on the board of a pregnancy crisis center, and I would counsel men that was going through this and never having a child, and our goal there was to find homes for the unplanned baby. And I would hear their cry. There's days I get ticked off. Well, my mama, I'm going to get disowned if I let this pregnancy come to fruition. My family's going to disown me. That's what I heard there. But you know how many times I've heard that said? Well, I can't really serve God. I can't go to church. If I do, my my family's going to disown me. My mama. I can look up and see one individual's face. His mama was reluctant to show up for his baptism. She showed up, but she was reluctant. Why? Because following Christ, being found a believer in a, in a Pentecostal church, oh, no, that's... That's not what we, and forgive me, that's not we, the Catholics, believe in. Now, am I hitting close to your home this morning? Because it happens all the time. But the rejection that Christ felt is so more in abundance greater than what we can even imagine that we've endured. Because there's been a few times that I've crawled up in the corner of a room with a box of Kleenex and had a pity party. It's ugly. You, you get a fat man crying in a corner somewhere, it becomes ugly. <laughs> but do you know it solved not one single problem? It's when I found myself on my face before God. I might be crying, but I wasn't having a pity party for old Jay. I was seeking out God. And in one of those times, God put into my heart, he says, you have never suffered like my son has. Wake up call. Didn't need to hit the pause button or the five-minute warning. Instantaneously, I woke up to the fact that if I suffer, and I'm going to bring that out in just a moment, if I'm suffering for Christ, I'm doing exactly what he's called me to do. Because in the message that I'm giving you this morning, no matter if the world hates you, when you have Jesus in your life, you have enough to get through. There's a power that instills within you. It comes alongside of you and it wraps around you. And there are some days that Jesus will just kiss you on the forehead, hold you tight, and say, it's all going to be okay. Quit your whining and get back in the game. When we feel like we should throw in the towel, wipe the sweat off your brow and get back to work. Roll up your sleeves. Roll up. You're going to have to become thick skin to be a Christian. Why? Because you can't go through life just on your feelings. You can't go through life trying to find your happiness because serving God is not always happy. Trust me. Hang out with me in the middle of the night and I'm crying over you. Be with me when I'm crying and praying for you. See, I stand here this morning seeing so much more potential than the majority of you give yourself credit. All God's desiring is that you get out of yourself and get out of the world and step over and find the focus of who Christ is in your life. 
Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. Is it going to be worth it? 110% yes. Because it is worth it. When you find yourself becoming sacrificial of your own wants and your own desires, you'll start seeing the hand of God move upon you. For those keeping count, I'm on page seven. <laughs> Everything that Christ endured was a purpose. Everything that Christ had to walk through, live through, there's even times that he slept through what others seemed within their heart was a problem. He walked in peace for one reason. Because he trusted God, his father. He trusted God. He didn't rely upon man's opinions or man's thoughts. He trusted God. When he was going through something, he separated himself and he got into the presence of God, his father, and he petitioned him. Church, if you're walking from one person to another to get an opinion of what God's got for you, that's about what that's worth. A good kick of an almost completely empty box of Kleenex. You know why? Because... You're not searching after man's opinion. You're finding that you step into the place that you take that next step not knowing what's going to be there. Trusting God that when he's called it, when he's brought you, when he has sent you to those places in your life that you can trust God. Now, some of you are sitting here, you may not even know who, who Christ is, and God is just a byproduct of a few ill-speaking, ill-spoken words. But the God I'm talking about, the only access we have to him is through Jesus Christ himself. And what Jesus showed us is that there's going to be individuals that will be at the parade and they will cheer you on and they will shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the next, the next time they see you, they're screaming out, crucify, crucify. And then as you walk and you make that road of destiny, because that's what it was. Wasn't it, Mary? It was a road. He had to travel and carry the cross on a road to his destiny. And the very people that he fed, the very people he reached down to, the very people he spoke to. I mean, it isn't like a, a big transit in New York City where a thousand people gets on the on the subway and you go and the next train comes, another thousand get off. It's not these people were a part of that. And in that Passion Week, there were those individuals that was coming back to that place because of the festivities. But these men that cried, holy, 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 these men that cried out was those same individuals that cleared their throat and spit upon Christ. Serving God with everything that you are is worth it. Think about that. Can I remind you that you don't suffer alone? That the one that gave his life still sits at the right hand of his heavenly father, interceding for you when you're going through the hard times of your life. He is there as an advocate. Remember, Show him grace, Lord. Father, show him grace. Show him mercy. I died for him. There's a purpose. Remember his purpose? 
He can't figure it out right now, but there's a purpose. Remember the purpose? And so God's grace flows freely from the heavens. His mercy is showed every day of our lives. There was a commission. I'm closing. Trust me, I'm closing. I'm not lying. Stand to your feet. It'll make me easier to close. It says in Matthew chapter 5, if that can come on the screen, Brother Caleb, verse 11, verse 12, it says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. If this was in a red letter edition, leather bound Bible, it would be in red. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're living in a time that evil's rising, but God will still be supreme. It's where we're at in our lives, church. It's where we're at in coming to a place in our lives that, that we fulfill the great commission found in Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. My prayer for you today is that you will receive what has been spoken to you. Even though you serve God and the world hates you, you need to count it. As James wrote, you need to count it all joy within your life when you fall into those diverse situations. Even though you're going through trials and the tribulations that are so immediately in your face, find that it builds within you a character and a hope. Because God's faithful. God gives us an understanding if we will keep our eyes on Him and keep moving toward Him. Has any of us arrived yet? Absolutely not. It's when we take our last breath. And as long as we are breathing, we're still alive, we can function and go forth in God. But are we going to be without the problems? Absolutely not. This isn't a gumdrop on the tree world that we're living in. You know, it's just part of it. But here this morning, I ask that you do this one thing with me. Not for me, with me. Will you just ask God to direct your life? Now, that's a scary thought. Ain't much to that wording, is it? But just simply ask God, will you direct my life? We sang that song, Oceans. Every song that was sung this morning was sung in who I am. And what God's calling us. God, just have your way to direct us. Bow your heads, if you will. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, Lord. God, I've stood here and done what you've asked me to do. God, we need to step into this world now knowing you have a purpose and a plan for us. God, we can't continue to do life of what we've been doing. We have to find ourselves submissive to you being subjected to you. And, and God, as I ask, Lord, just direct our steps. 
direct us in the ways that we should go. God put within our hearts that we have to find ourselves of a morning seeking you out early before the world has an effect upon us. God, let us find ourselves seeking what your word says for who we are, Lord, not what the world says, but what your word says about me, what your word says about us. Because life in these last days, even though we see and we hear, Heavenly Father, it's your report that I'm going to believe. It's what your word says I'm going to believe. It's your promises that I stand upon. It's upon who you are and your faithfulness that I reside in, in your presence. And, and Lord, if an attitude of heart has to change, God, let us change and accept you, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, that we may have relationship with you, our Heavenly Father. So God, move upon your people. God, have your way. And we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. and amen. Make yourself friendly. Greet our guests that have come in. And for our guests, I pray that God spoke to you this morning. God bless you all.